Hello and welcome back. Today I want to start going into the details of practical filters by looking at a type of filter commonly used at low frequency, passive RC filters. How complicated can that be? You just need resistors and capacitors. Now out of the three basic passive components, resistors, capacitors and inductors, what makes resistors and capacitors special, and well for that matter inductors different, is the range of available component values and component sizes. You will easily get resistors with values from milliohms up to megaohms in tiny packages, resistors have a very wide value range and they are the cheapest of the components. Next up you have the capacitors, again very small in package and quite a lot of values are commonly available. But inductors are different since here size increases really fast, so you can build or buy a lot of the values, but they are not cheap or space efficient especially at large values. So at very low frequency, when processing signals, the most common building blocks for filters are resistor-capacitor combinations. Now, any lumped element filter, fundamentally, is built on the properties of components to have frequency-dependent values, namely frequency-dependent impedance. This does not occur with resistors, but it is a basic property of capacitors and inductors. As frequency changes, the impedance of the used components will be different, so the response of the circuit will be different, and well, frequency dependent. With the resistor, the impedance stays constant, with the capacitor it decreases, and with inductors it increases. So to build a filter, you will need at least one frequency dependent component. For the basic circuits, RC, RL, and LC, based on the used component values, a resonance or corner frequency is defined, and this signifies the frequency at which the two elements have the same absolute impedance. So regardless of the exact configuration, at the frequency given by this formula, you either get a minus 3 attenuation, so power is halved with the basic RC and RL circuit, or you get a zero or infinite attenuation with an LC filter. Today we will be focusing on RC filters, so this specific formula will come into play quite often. To exemplify the various circuits, as usual I will be using LT Spice, and the specific simulation type is AC analysis, so to get the overall frequency behavior. So I will be simulating from 1Hz up to 100kHz. And we can start off by looking at the four basic filters that can be built with passive RC networks, high pass, low pass, band pass, and band stop filters. So, simply using one resistor and one capacitor, we can either make a high pass or a low pass filter. Since the capacitor's impedance decreases with an increase in frequency, if we use it after the resistor, it will shun the signal at high frequency, so you get a low pass effect, and if it's in line, the signal will only pass at high frequency, so you should get a high pass effect. If we run these two circuits, we can observe our minus 3 decibel point at 159 Hz, as predicted by our formula. So it's the same frequency for both the low pass and the high pass filter. But another thing that we can observe is that the transition, so from the pass band down to the stop band, is quite slow. So it takes decades of frequency. And the slope is not all that steep. So for these particular filters, it's minus 20 decibels of attenuation for each frequency decade. Now we can improve on this by using higher order filters, so using multiple RC blocks. But this will only partly solve our problems. So if we just compare the response of the base high pass filter with our second order high pass filter, we can observe that the slope is indeed steeper, but the transition between the two regions is still quite slow. And this will be a common theme with RC filters. The Q factor, which is impacted by the reactance to resistance ratio in the system, will always be small, since there's always a lot of resistance present in the system. Now, moving on, we can combine the two basic blocks, so the high pass and the low pass, to create a band pass type of filter. So as long as the corner frequency of the high pass filter is smaller than that of the low pass filter, we can create this type of band pass circuit. And there are three main ways in which this can be done. You can have either the high pass or the low pass first, or you can just combine the components into two sets. The exact difference can be observed when we simulate. 
So if we look at the three responses, we can see that we are getting the exact same response for the last two circuits, but the response is lower in the passband compared to the first circuit. And the difference is coming from the exact order of the resistors. In the second and third circuit, the two resistors are forming a resistor divider that is halving the response. So we are getting a maximum response of minus six decibels. With the first circuit, because the order is different, we are no longer getting this resistor divider. So in the passband, we are getting a maximum of zero dB. Finally, you can also build notch or band stop filters. And here I found quite a few interesting implementations. So the first circuit to look at is the 20 notch filter built with a set of resistors and capacitors where the values have to respect a certain ratio. So the upper two resistors are equal and the lower resistor is equal to half that of the upper resistor value and the lower capacitors also need to be equal and the upper capacitor needs to be equal to twice the lower capacitor value. Now to get the proper response, the exact practical values also need to be as accurate as possible. So you really need to respect these various ratios. And well, the special thing about this filter can be observed when we look at its output response. At the defined corner frequency, we are getting an almost infinite amount of attenuation, which is quite an uncommon phenomenon, considering that this is built only with resistors and capacitors. Now, the reason why this is happening can be observed if we look at the same filter, but where the two branches are separated. So if we look at the two responses, at the exact corner frequency, we can observe that we are getting the exact same amplitude, but we are getting two opposing phase signals. So in the ideal case, the two signals are canceling each other out. So this is quite a good filter design, but can only be built practically for one single frequency. It's very difficult to make this thing adjustable while still keeping the component ratios. When the adjustable filter is the design goal, we have this other implementation. So this will still require a specific component ratio, so the free capacitors need to be equal, and then the upper resistor needs to be six times the sum of the lower resistors. But the nice thing about this is that the two bottom resistors only need to maintain a constant sum. So they can be implemented as a potentiometer. But by adjusting the exact ratio of the two resistors, we can adjust the exact filters notch frequency. So in these two implementations, I'm using the same components, it's just that the bottom two resistors have a different ratio, but the sum is always one kilo ohm. And if we look at the two responses, we can see that the exact frequency has changed while still keeping the same notch type of response. The final circuit to mention today is the bridge T type of notch filter. So this is quite a simple circuit. It only uses four components and based on the exact component values, you have a specific notch frequency. But also, based on the exact values and their ratios, you can change the exact response. So if we look at the response of the second, third, and fourth filter, the corner frequency is always the same, but the exact attenuation that is being obtained and while well, the bandwidth is different. So playing around with the values, you can adjust the exact response of the circuit. Now, all of the filters presented so far mostly let everything through or had an ever increasing level of attenuation with no limit in sight. But what about the case when you want to attenuate a range of frequencies, but only by a certain amount? Well, this brings us to limited attenuation filters. So if we take the case of the basic low pass filter, the capacitor's impedance constantly decreases as frequency increases, at least with the theoretical capacitor, there is no limit, the higher the frequency, the higher the final attenuation will be. So the limited attenuation refers to limiting the maximum attenuation to a fixed predictable value, say minus 20 decibels or 90%. This is done by forcing the shunt impedance to have a minimum defined value by adding an extra resistor. At low frequency, the attenuation is zero, the shunt impedance is very high, but as frequency increases, the attenuation will also increase, but only to the value enforced by the extra resistor. Even if the capacitor has a zero impedance, the total impedance will always be the sum of the capacitor and the resistor. Now, because the initial filter is no longer built just with a single resistor and capacitor, the total corner frequency of this thing will move, 
But anyway, based on the exact filter type, calculation formulas do exist. So for this particular case, these are the two corner frequency calculations, one for when the attenuation starts and one for when it stops. So just to highlight this effect, I prepared a few simulations starting from our base low pass filter. So if we add an extra resistor in series with the capacitor, we should be able to enforce a fixed lower attenuation limit. If we run a simulation and compare our reference trace to our first modified circuit, we can observe this limited attenuation appearing at almost exactly minus 20 decibels in reference to our initial baseline. Now we can take this idea one step further and add multiple capacitors in parallel with our initial one. This way we can create multiple corner frequencies. So if we add this extra RC set, we are creating new corner frequencies above which attenuation will again increase. So by extending the simulation a bit, we can see the new corner frequency appearing and then the new stabilization plateau appearing. So this way you can create complex response patterns according to your specific needs. Now, the other thing that you can do is also enforce a specific upper limit. So in case you always want some amount of attenuation, so not to have a zero decibel reference limit, like with our first circuit, you can add a parallel resistor and limit the initial response. So here we can see our limited response with our third case circuit. And well, finally, we can combine both methods, both to limit the high response as well as the low response. So based on the desired response shape, a complex resistor capacitor circuit can be created to give the exact response shape that you want. So the last circuit to highlight today is the Baxandall tone control circuit for audio applications. This is not the only type of tone control, but it's one of the most well known. So to adjust the exact response, this circuit is built with two potentiometers, which in the simulation I built with resistors and I have some formulas with a specific P1 and P2 parameter to set the exact percentage to which the potentiometer is pointing. So I will be simulating this with a list going from one end to the other. So between 0.1% up to 99%. So if we simulate this thing and we look at the output and just not plot the phase to make it a bit more clear, by going through the curves a few times, we can observe that we have one curve, so this pink one, which is appearing when the two potentiometers are set to 90%, which gives an almost perfectly flat response at around minus 20 decibels. Now, by using the different potentiometer ratios, you are getting the different types of responses. So the left side potentiometer is mainly impacting the low frequencies, so it's adjusting the low pass behavior, and while the right side potentiometer is mainly impacting the high frequencies, so the high pass behavior. Now it's important to observe that this specific circuit will always attenuate, so all of these output curves are below the zero decibel mark. But by adjusting the exact attenuation value, a specific overall response curve can be achieved. Now even though this sort of limited attenuation is sometimes a desired feature, like in the audio tone corrector, if you look into the details a bit, every real life filter is a limited attenuation filter. So one of the really nice features that Kemet, one of the major capacitor manufacturers offers, is this web-based tool, where you can observe the various parameters of their capacitors and how the parameters vary over a frequency range. For the purposes of today's discussion, one of the things that you can look at is the ESR or equivalent series resistance variation with frequency. So especially for very low value capacitors, this plot is being generated for a one nanofarad film capacitor. If you would be using this in say an audio filter, if we look at the one kilohertz point, we can observe that the ESR is in the 1.7 kilo ohm range, which is normally not really negligible. Now, this is perfectly normal every capacitor will have some amount of ESR. So there is nothing wrong with this specific capacitor or with the tool. The point is that this should be taken into consideration when creating a design. One of the reasons why your simulation might not match the real life measurement will be that the components and their specific parasitics are not properly modeled. Something like a frequency dependent ESR is not really easy to model and not having it will usually affect your simulation results. The last thing to mention about all of the circuit configurations highlighted today is their interface to the rest of the circuit. All the simulations 
used zero impedance ideal signal sources and infinite impedance ideal loads. This made the mathematics nicely line up with the simulation results, but when you connect some real circuitry, the response will change. So normally RC filters are not used in isolation, but rather connected to some sort of active circuitry, turning them into active filters. But that is a topic for next time. For now, hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, there are more similar videos on my channel that you can check out. And if you want to be up to date with my latest releases, also consider subscribing. See you next time. Bye bye.